Good morning, folks. We'll be going over several things today, including the sun, the comet that was diving towards it, some eye candy science, a new space weather collaboration, solar forcing, and auroral science as well. Let's start with the last 24 hours on our stars. We find the coronal hole continuing to turn through, surrounded by active region sunspot brightness. Smaller flares only, minor coronal pops, no significant CME production from them. We'll continue monitoring those today, but up next, let's check in on the little sundiving comet. Really thought this one had a good chance of surviving, but the images from SOHO this morning appear to tell a different story. The comet curled in deep at the end of its run and was likely vaporized. I will be checking SOHO coronagraphs one last time later in the day to be sure, but it does appear this little guy met his end in his perihelion close approach. Bit of eye candy up next. Surface minerals mapped by satellite in arid regions shows the stark differences between the desert regions on several continents. It matters for dust and sandstorm mineral deposition not only into the ocean but mixing up with the aerosols into the atmosphere. Not to mention it's beautiful. Up next though we've got James Webb's newest look at a supernova remnant even more beautiful. It's amazing how much difference there is between the near-infrared and mid-infrared return cameras that it has, both in detail and in dust recognition. It has been eight years since the government handed down the mandate to better cooperate on space weather awareness, and here we are just now seeing the signing of agreements for how they think it will be done. We are still years from seeing the realization of these agreements, or whether they will benefit the community or not. Solid paper up next on the sun, ENSO, which is the El Nino and La Nina cycle, and the Asian monsoon. Veterans know there are already hundreds of papers on solar forcing of ENSO and on monsoon behavior. This one dives into how they all play together for longer cycle modulation over time. Last but not least, folks, I don't like the way scientists discuss this topic. Yes, it is true that the Steve and picket fence particle excitement of the upper atmosphere are slightly different from the auroral oval seen circling the polar region, but they aren't so different as to be thought of as different phenomena in their foundation. Both involve energetic particles from space hitting the upper atmosphere and triggering reactions that produce light. Both are driven by solar activity and space weather, and both must be monitored as Earth's weakening magnetic field makes us more vulnerable to that solar activity. Don't forget, we will be kicking off 2024 in Phoenix, so grab your tickets to that longer, in-depth event with special guests. We would love to see you out there, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.